Hello, hello, guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Zakaria, the ghost. Today, I want to talk about Mpoa Badimo. I was just watching an interview with DJ Spoo on uh, The Hustler's Corner. A great, great interview. You know, and one thing that I like about DJ Spoo, he always wants you to tell your story. You know, and she was telling a story. She was, you know, giving us, you know, the background about her spiritual journey before Big Brother Africa. You know, and her story is touching. It is so painful and it hurts me to know that she is not the only one who is dealing with that. Because it's like almost everyone who goes to the initiation school whereby they can become traditional healer, they go through this harsh punishment and harsh treatment whereby they are treated like they are not human beings. And it breaks my heart. She is not the only one simply because of now Gobelas are treating people so bad even if they are paying you know, money so that they can teach them certain things. And now that makes me question if, you know, this spiritual journey, traditional healing journey, which everybody is diving into right now, the majority of celebrities are diving into right now, if it is actually the calling or it is actually something that people go through so that they can just get rid of certain things which they're dealing with in their lives. Because it looks like people want to go through that journey so that they can just pay, you know, some generational debt. It looks like that. It looks like for them to get certain things to happen the right way, they have to do whatever that their grandmother and their grandfathers didn't do back in the days. It's like you have to bridge the gap. And it hurts simply because of... They go to Gobelas who says, we can help, we can do this, we can do that. But what they need when they get there. Others are becoming wives, are becoming wives. Others are treated like animals. And, and when you listen to their story, when they, they tell you how they're treated, it is so bad, guys. What are we becoming? If we want to be Africans, we want to be proud of who we are, but we... I used to listen to the round table about traditional healers. And when you listen to their stories, it hurts. Simply because of now, people go to traditional healers so that they can get clarity. They can get answers to the things that they're struggling with. But when you get more problems at the initiation school than what you came with, it's just horrible. Now, what are we saying? There is no longer, you know, great covelas or it is, it is just business. Because there is something that they mention a lot. When they get there, it looks like they teach them to read bones. And more than half of them, they quit without knowing and understanding how to read bones. Now that makes me question if from your family, your ancestors, your great-grandfathers, your forefathers has been using bones. Why is the Gobela has to teach you about what you have, what is in your family already? Because if they were using bones in your family, automatically your forefathers, your ancestors, they must show you bones. When you go to the Gobela, bones are the, are the things that you need to know how to use. I don't know. They even call, call, call that process the initiation school. Right there, for them to say initiation school, that means you are going there so that somebody can teach you certain things. You are there to be taught. What are you there to be taught? Simply because of if you have a calling, why do you need lessons if you have a calling? Because of a calling, it's in you. So what is this guy teaching you? 
doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Simply because of he knows that he has nothing to teach, that's why he is abusing people. Of course, we have levels when it comes to traditional healers. There are those who go to the river and they will meet, you know, the landlord in the river and they will come out with their things. Those people, they don't need a gobela to tell them anything. They came out with everything. And of course, there are those who will sleep when they wake up. You know, there will be a small bag, you know, with bones and everything that they can use. Obviously, these people, they don't need a gobela. They were given by their ancestors. And there are those who sleep and when they wake up under their pillow, they found those red and white beads and everything. They don't go and buy them. They just wake up with those things next to them. Of course, we know that. And there are other traditional healers who using the seashells. Of course, we know that. And there are those who will have bones and there will always be stones. Indeed, we know that and we understand why. And there are those who are using dice. I still want to understand why dice are included there. I, that, that one, I don't get it. Now, of course, we know that others, you know, they help people by seeing things. The person just go to sleep, you wake up, and you already know that so-and-so is coming to my place and so-and-so is struggling with this and I need to get this and that and mix them together and give this person so that the, this person can find healing. Simply because of there is still a difference between a traditional healer and a witch doctor. And currently what I see online, I'm not happy at all. I don't want to disrespect traditional healers, but I'm not happy at all. Simply because of traditional healers are healers. They are there to heal. They make things better. But there is a certain group now that I don't understand that tells you that if you come to me, I can give you this thing that can make you get money. And I don't understand which department those guys are into. I'm sorry to say that, but we know that Traditional healers, others, they do have certain things that they're using. But now others go extra mile to give you certain things that you can use to make you get money. And, and these are the people who makes the public or the community to rage against traditional healers. Simply because of they think everyone is doing the same thing that those other guys are doing. And of course, there is this wave of, you know, celebrities becoming traditional healers. And some of the things, man, when people are over 30 and they're telling you that I have a calling, I must become a traditional healer. We're like, hmm, this thing, man, you're born with it. It's either you have it or you don't have it. You have to be that child which has been troubling everybody, which has been seeing a lot of stuff. I'm talking about Mpoa Badimu simply because of the things that she mentioned. You know, she spoke about how she was struggling even if when she was young, when she was still in primary school. Now you understand that it's a thing which has been there to her. Not something that somebody just wake up one day when they are in their 30s and saying, I have a calling and this is, you know, how things are supposed to be done. And that's the reason why you know, people are abused a lot simply because of now. When the Kobela look at you, you know, they see that there is nothing there. They have to teach you how to read bones and you don't even understand how to read bones. There are many people who said, even if they were trying to teach them how to read bones, they didn't understand how to read bones. Yes, it, it, it must take time because they are not your things. You need to learn how to use them because of it's something that you went to school to learn so that you can graduate. That's the reason why even if when they are done there, they have to make a ceremony whereby they graduate. Because of there were students. There were students. They were learning about herbs. They were learning about all these things. But the traditional healers that we know, they sleep. They dream about a certain tree. They go and dig that tree. And they are told already in their dreams that that tree will heal that disease. 
it's, 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 I'm, I'm looking at things, man. I'm like, I should start talking about these things, man. I should start talking about these things because our children are researching every day because they are lost. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. And the, the content that they get online is misleading people. Because that's not how traditional healers was when we were growing up. We grew up watching traditional healers who were doing things in a way that you will always be happy to be next to them because there is healing. People come from different provinces. People come from different, you know, villages, you know, so that they were seeking help. And you can see, even if when the person, you know, was having problems, if, even if the leg was rotten, I have to be honest. Because of this is YouTube, I'm trying to, to count my weights well whereby there is this thing we call it sephola whereby you know you stepped into something and now your leg will start you know being painful and later it will turn green and it's going to be a problem whereby now you know if you're not careful you will start having worms and stuff and if you go to the you know western doctors they're going to cut your leg but traditionally we know that you know there was but i think they're still there traditional healers that you know a person will go there and that person will get healed. And we will every day experience that person, you know, getting better every day. There will be a certain muti or a certain, you know, help that, you know, they will wash that leg every morning. And after washing that leg, they will tell the person to sit outside so that, you know, they, that leg can get, you know, a little bit of air, that breeze. And that wound will, will get dry, slowly will get dry. I'm not saying they are saying, I saw someone traveling all the way from Alexander to the rural area so that that person can get helped. And every morning when we were sitting with that person, you know, and the great gentleman, he was speaking a Zulu language and he decided to go to Limpopo so that he can get helped. And he was telling us, you know, his story, how he lost his money, how he went to different traditional healers in, in Gauteng. And at the end, someone who was, you know, the neighbor, you know, told him about this traditional healer in Limpopo. And, you know, he went there and he was like, say, you know what, let me just go there. Let me just go there and see if I will get help. Because now his leg, it was starting to, to you know, yeah. It was solely, you know, they were like, some liquids they were like worms coming out but i can tell you the gentleman went back to Houting, you know fully healed every time we were sitting with him this leg which had a problem he always made sure that you know his trouser you know it it, it, it will what is the the right word in english he will always fold his trouser on this side of you know the leg which is swollen up to his knee so that you know the air, the air can just make that wound dry and early in the morning the traditional healer will always you know bath or, or wash that you know feet, uh, that foot or that leg so that that leg can get you know dry and he will apply some certain you know herbs so that it can it can it can be better and after three to four weeks you know the gentleman was good he was like walking so there is traditional healers and and it just it just hurts because we are lost as africans and it is so bad and you hear traditional healers involved in some crazy things simply because of they cannot see simply because of there is not lines which are coming to their place simply because of they're asking too many questions than giving answers my first video on youtube I spoke about spirituality. I spoke about traditional healers. And I was telling people that from 2020, watch this space, there will be a wave of traditional healing. Everybody will be talking about traditional healing. There will be channels about traditional healing. 
and people will be everywhere glorifying the traditional healing and people will be wearing red and white like it's fashion and everybody will be very proud of i'm a traditional go and check the first video it's there online i was talking about traditional healers they're asking too many questions than giving answers and i appreciate you guys for me love and support i just wanted to speak about that you know and when i watched this interview at the post um the hustlers corner it reminded me you know the interview I saw at Afrosavi where they had, you know, a round table. I should go back and watch those interviews and speak about them. And I appreciate you guys showing me love and support. Thank you.